Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. Right, it's uh, essentially Tiger Roll Week here on Friday Night Racing. And I'm going to start with the competition before we get into uh, this, because it's very relevant. On what could be his final start in Ireland, it says here, Tiger Roll begins its quest for a historic Aintree Grand National three in a row. No pressure. In the Grade 2 Labrooks Ireland Boyne Hurdle at Navin this Sunday to win a VIP day at Navin Racecourse for you and your guests, which includes admission, race cards and delicious lunch in the restaurant. Tell us who trains Tiger Roll. Text your name and answer to 53106 for 30 cents and we'll get back to it later on today. Now, the reason that it is uh, Tiger Roll Week here this week on Friday Night Racing is because we've got Keith Donoghue in. Keith, how are you? I'm very good, yeah. No pressure. Just the most famous horse in the world this weekend. Ah, uh, yeah. Just I ride him out every day, so yeah. I'm used to him. How, how is he? Yeah, he's good, yeah. Um, obviously, you know, he had a setback and he's probably not as fit as he was going into this race last year and he hasn't been away from home yet either. Um, but, like, he's ready to start off and, you know, it'll be a nice start. I think the ground's going to be heavy, so that probably will be a bit of a disadvantage. But if we just get a nice run into him to leave him out for Cheltenham, it would be the main, main aim. Yeah. Johnny, how are you? Grand, yeah. Lucky that uh, Eddie O'Leary said he's going to run in the Grand National just for, just an hour ago. Just would have made the show a bit redundant. <laughs> but uh, was there any uh, doubt in your mind? Or now, in fairness, it is. This is a point I would make as well. It is dependent on his well-being. Like we sure, haven't seen yeah. him. You can't just assume that the horse is going to perform. For a horse that's been on the go since 2013 and performed at that level, he's he's a complete um, freak, really, to be as good as he is. But it's it's all go all systems go anyway, it seems. Yeah, it is all systems going. Like obviously winning the two grand nationals it's gonna to have to take something out of him, but you won't know until you mm. until you go back to the track, I suppose. And uh also like he he still has to qualify for the race as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was just writing a piece about him today and I remember when he won the Triumph Hurdle and a friend of mine was saying uh, he fancied him for the Champion Hurdle the following year and he ended up running in the Stairs Hurdle and he was down the field but he went, I think he went six races unplaced over hurdles and then he ran the beginner's chase and you'd never have any idea of what was going to happen. It's like he wasn't, wouldn't appeal, even like in his early days, what did you think in terms of going over fences? Because like he's not even really bred or built for it necessarily. Yeah, no, you wouldn't have thought, like when he said running over fences during the summer, like he, he wasn't a good jumper. Mm. He, he probably still isn't a good jumper of a normal fence, but you know, the cross country and the fences and entry suit him and... Uh, Why? What's the difference? Like, so in how he jumps? jumps. Yeah. What's the... I don't, I don't really know, but like when you see the way he jumped in the four miler with Lisa O'Neill, like he... I don't know how he stood up, like how he got around, I honestly don't know. And uh, But then over the cross-country fences or the national fences, he just, he's brilliant and I just think they suit him better. Right. There's a big game given the national fences that wouldn't have been... It was, it was a magical light last year. She literally, it was like a hologram the way she went through a fence. So it's just this massive, like, almost... Is there a fake kind of top brush bar to it that you can get through? Yeah, I suppose the top of them, you know, you can... To a certain extent, you can probably brush through the top of them, and I think that's what suits the Tiger Roll. Would, what's your opinion on that? Because it's... it's a, like, I was looking today at the, the, the weights of the horses, like, top weights... A, a top weight hasn't won it since, I think, 19... Days. The cross country, the, the Grand National, sorry, National. hasn't run the, won the National since 1950, I think, uh, and then there was like a scatter of like ten stone, ten stone four. But the race compared to say when you were a kid has completely changed. Yeah, it's completely changed. Like uh, this year, like going out in the last lap in the National, nearly the whole field was there. Mm. Like when you were a kid, you know, going out in the last lap, there'd probably only be half of them left. Yeah. So like the fences are definitely smaller than they used to be, but I know it's for safety reasons, and they have to they have to do that, you know, to keep everybody happy and um it was in black and white in the radio when Johnny was a kid to be honest, you know when I actually see it see it on TV. But you know the way though they bet on like how many will fall at first. Now Not that anymore, now they? They, they they still do and they yeah. they tend to get it wrong because I don't know, I've I've a mixed feeling about it because I know they did it for the right reasons. They did it in terms of uh, welfare. We had uh Ger Lines on here, I think he rode in the race and it's just a completely different race. It doesn't Tiger Roll wouldn't have had a hope in the Grand National twenty years ago. Do you know because it's just he wouldn't be able to negotiate them fences because they took so much getting in my view anyway. So you're his work rider, but you're also riding him in races. Yeah. How long? How long? When did the? When did you graduate from being work rider to race rider? Well, I never, I never really rode him much until I rode him in a Clamell Oil Chase, say, 2018, so it was, and uh, even no 20, 2017, sorry. Right. And uh, he ran bad, and Gordon just said that he's going to send him for the Banks races, so I started kind of schooling him and doing that type of stuff to, you know, to. Run them over the banks and then uh, the banks races is the cross country. The cross stuff. country, yeah. Right. How do you school? Like, because they, 
They don't have those fences in Gordon's yard, do they? No, we uh, there's a place in, in Summer Hills called Sally Cascadon where we brought them up there. It's like a cross country place, and you know, jumped them over them, and we we also brought them over to chat them a couple of times to school over them as well. Right. Okay, so obviously they had a sense that there was something in the horse, because you don't go to the ex expense of bringing a horse to chat them for this race unless you think he's got a chance. Well, he had plenty of ability. That was the, yeah. that was the point. He, he, always had, he always had the ability. He was after winning a four miler in the meantime as well. Like. Right. And uh, that's I suppose I just kind of, that's where I got attached to the horse was by doing all that schooling on him and then winning the cross country race on him in 2018. Right. What was that like? Oh, it was brilliant, yeah. Well, tell yeah. us, uh, how much of the day do you actually remember? Oh, the whole lot, yeah. Because I had to lose six pounds that morning to ride him, so uh, oh, I, I won't forget that anyway. How did you do it? I was just running and sweating, but um, you were running about fifty miles a week at that time, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah it would have been yeah. Um, but that, it, it was brilliant, like just to get a win and chat. Are you not it, knackered by the time the race comes around? Are no. you not like, oh my god, this race, lens are gonna be over. I need some food. Yeah, I know you don't be like adren adrenaline and that kick in, like you need to be especially grand. Cheltenham. Yeah, especially Cheltenham, and uh, ch you you grow up dreaming of riding in Cheltenham, let alone riding the winner in Cheltenham. Was this your first so. race? Uh, no, I had rode in Cheltenham a good few times for my first winner in Cheltenham. Okay, right. And you must have known going into it that... So, what, was it about 8 to 1 or...? Yeah, it was around that. So. Yeah, I'd say we probably fancied them more weeks before and then the ground started going a bit soft and we were a bit unsure about the soft ground, but thankfully he went on it. So what pressure do you feel under? What, what's that like when you haven't had a Cheltenham winner and you know this horse has a chance and you've been over to Cheltenham to school him on these fences? So like everybody's like, listen, he's got a chance here, you know, come on. Come on kids. Yeah, no, I wouldn't feel, feel much pressure like it. I wouldn't call it pressure, but you, you nearly just want... You know, excitement? Like, excitement, like, yeah, yeah, you know, that's yeah, why you let's get do out all there. the running. That's why you do everything is to ride on big days like that, like, yeah. so, yeah. And so tell us about the rest of the day. Did you have any other rides? Uh, that year, no, I didn't. I just had him that year. Right, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all coming down to this one moment and you're on the start line at Cheltenham. What can you hear? Um, I, I suppose you don't hear a whole lot because you're just in, in the zone, like you're just trying to get a nice position and, um, you know, making sure that you get a good position in the race. Right, and in that race, because it's so long, like, it's not like you have, you know, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to do this one thing for the next 16 minutes <laughs> or however long it takes. It's like it's a long out race. So what, what is your strategy? Um, I suppose he was after running over them in December, so to say, of 2017, and he jumped a bit careful and he he was a bit sticky over them, so we knew that we'd ride him handier and get him jumping and get him travelling, and, you know, rode him kind of third or fourth the whole way, and he just, he was jumping a lot quicker when I was taking him back. Everything was in his comfort zone, and, like, it, it couldn't have went much better. Right. If you'd asked me to go out in certain points in the race, what position I'd want to be in, I was in them. You'd have pinpointed yeah, that. Yes, like, I was just, everything happened so easy. That, that race itself, then, how does it compare to you in terms of a buzz compared to a conventional chase? Um, well, obviously, I, I grew up hunting, hunting all my life, like, so to, like, I, I love, love jumping. So a particular video of you actually just uh, coming out over a gate and hoping that there was no traffic on the road there the other day. Ah, yeah, I'd ask the horse to go if he can hear the cars coming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, but that's like, it, uh, I grew up hunting and all that, so like, to kind of win a cross country race probably needs more, you know, the type of way, like, I, I love, love all that. Mm. I'd say it's an unreal buzz, like, I remember talking to Carberry and he seemed to prefer that more than race riding, in ways, you know. Yeah, in ways, like, to be, in ways I would probably get more of a buzz out of hunting than riding a winner sometimes. Mm. Obviously, riding a winner in Cheltenham is completely different, but there would be days where I'd go hunting and I'd be on a much better buzz. I would be coming home than if I rode a winner. Yeah. Yeah. I was into the West was on at Christmas, and there was a hunt on when they were trying to evade the hunt, but it was it did show just the... It, do, you, do you know generally what's coming up, or is it kind of half random what you're jumping coming no, up? You, you never know. You really just don't know. Next, no. Like, you know, other people would look and say, how do you get a buzz out of hunting? Mm. But... It's bred into you, it's born into you. Mm. It, like, you know, I grew up a hunting all my life and uh, that's just been bred into me, whereas someone else might get a buzz out of something else and I'd be like, oh, why do you get a buzz out of that? You know, the type of way, like, yeah. it's just... That's and it revives bred. horses as well. Some horses just get more of... They get sweet again. Yeah, uh, they do, yeah. It's, is that, it, is that know, a thing, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. It's right. just change the scenery and stuff and do something different when their mind's a bit gone. I think um, horses do get fed up like the rest of us doing the same thing over and over, you know? Back to the race, right? It's going really well for you early on. Are you feeling confident at that stage? Are you, when you say, I'm in the zone, I'm kind of, so obviously everything's going well. When do you start thinking, this is going exactly how I need it to be? You said looking back, I'd be able to pinpoint, I'm in the right place there. But in the yeah, race, what uh, are you feeling? Um, I remember jumping the hedge behind the big screen. I think you were about 
eight or nine left to jump at that point, and I, I remember it was just going so easy that I just kept saying, I just try not to get there too soon. But when the, the canal turn was bypassed the first year, and when we bypassed that, there's three hedges across the side before you come onto the race course proper. He was just like lightning over the three of them, and he just pulled his way to the front. So he's already getting to the front, and you're like, oh, I'm sit back a little bit here. And at that stage, are you thinking, well, look, I'm going to let him go here because these guys are starting to wind up a bit? Yeah, you know, and I jumped to second last, I kind of said, let me just let him on there. And I, I, I knew, I never looked behind, but I knew there was a horse close enough to me. And um, I got in, a, in under the last little bit, but when I landed, nothing was going to get by me. Right, and how, I don't remember how much you won it by in the end. I think two and a half, three lengths. Oh, it's close enough. Yeah. Like, there's actually yeah, there's a sound behind enough. you. Yeah. And the immediate aftermath of that, the sound of that crowd surely gets into you at that point, you're like... I can hear that now. When we're at Cheltenham. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah sure. It's from and everyone coming up saying, well done to you all. And it's a, it's, it's a brilliant feeling. Like it's, you, you, you wouldn't mind getting it every day anyway. Yeah, I presume that is a bit of a drug. Ah, it is, definitely it is, yeah. There are some, some, like some jockeys that won winners. McCoy be all winners. And I'd say other jockeys just... The run of the middle stuff mightn't do it for them as much, but Cheltenham is just completely different. Like, yeah, it's completely different. Like, like the situation I'm in with my weight and all that, I'm never going to ride loads of winners mm. each season. I'm never going to, and I'd happily just ride four winners a year if they were good winners mm. instead of actually riding a normal run of the. How hard is the weight situation then? It is tough. It's a constant. It's a constant battle. Like it'd be. It's always on your mind. It's not, like I'm six foot. Like so, I'm never going to have it under fully under control, but um. When you have horses like Tiger Roll to ride, it makes it a bit easier. Mm. What would your diet be the week of racing? Um, just, you know, I have, a, I have a good routine. I know what to do now. If you can just eat eat three three healthy meals and drink plenty of water and do plenty of running. And That's not too bad. No, yeah. it's not, it isn't too bad. Like, but I'd still always have five or six pounds to lose. Yeah. Every, on race day? Yeah. That's, eventually that's going to, like, make you feel a bit like a horse that needs to go out hunting, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it does. That's why I, I probably don't ride that much in the summer. Well, it just give my body a chance because you do come, you do become ran down from it, like you yeah. do, and it's more probably mentally tough than physically tough sometimes. And so, are you full time then in 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 the yard? Like that's your that's your main yeah. gig. Yeah. yeah. And that's where you build up the relationship with the horses. Yeah. Like Tiger Roll, for example. Yeah. yeah. What's he like then? Uh, different. He's very very confident horse. He's um he knows he's good. He, you know, when he's starting to come to form, come March and April, he'd be bucking and plunging, and he'd be knocking rails down on the gallops, mm. and he probably would never be a great workhorse, but you just know by him if he was in good form. General or wellness, like yeah, yeah. What does he feel like now? He's he is coming, but we know he's not there yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah he is coming though, but um, obviously not getting him away and a few things like that. Probably just hasn't lit him fully up, but he schooled in that this morning, and he was he was. He's very awake after that. Would, would, there, would there just be a worry on Sunday that the, the ground is so bad that um, if he did run, you know, it's, it's a tough ass, it's a very good race, and if he did run Midland, like, that it wouldn't, like, it wouldn't stand to him in terms of his general confidence, or would it matter? Um, I don't, it probably, there is that chance, you are mm. taking that chance, like, and you never know until, until he gets back onto the track how he is going to perform, like, and he has come in and out of form before, so you just don't know. But, um, it's a serious race, you know, just looking at it. It's a proper, proper test. It is, it is. With, like with Magic, with Light, with uh, Tarasso. Kilfenora and all that. Kilfenora, yeah. Penn Hill. Like, there's a lot of depth in it, like mm. there definitely is. And uh, for, you know, well, I think if you could, even if you finished fifth. So just a nice run round. Like, yeah, and just, yeah, just showed a little bit of spark that we'd be mm. happy with that. Like he doesn't, he doesn't have to win. Mm. 25 to 1 and he romped home last year. That was the, and in, like, uh, it was a big win last year, wasn't it? It was the same race, yeah. yeah. But that was incredible. Won by many lengths, didn't it? Was, he? Well, it was, yeah, it was yeah, kind of like similar. everyone said he'd no chance he wouldn't be fit enough to win that race. And, um, like, in, 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 in hindsight, his, his price was crazy, but I think on the exchanges he was about 60 to 1 and uh, he absolutely bolted up. But, like, I'd be amazed if he won on Sunday because there's, there's so much going on in the race. And, like, people don't under, people shouldn't underestimate that he did have a, f not a reasonably, like, not a serious injury, but he had a, an injury that has what like, kept him. He chipped, he chipped a bone, wasn't it? Bone in his joint, yeah. Yeah, and that entailed then that he had to, what was he in his box for, like, three weeks or something? Yeah, three weeks or a month, yeah, and then he was only back walking for he's only re, he's only back riding now since the first of January like mm. so it's, it's only it is only what, five six six weeks of that yeah. yeah 
obviously he had a bit done before that, but he was he wasn't near fit. I don't think. Yeah, obviously you want to win in Cheltenham because that's why you go to Cheltenham and it's such an amazing record around Cheltenham. But if this year, is there any way that Cheltenham is about getting fit for the Grand National, or do you think by the time this is the race to get fit for the next race, as opposed to do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, no, no, there's no getting fit for the Grand National like. Cheltenham and Aintree there was two days they're going to be right, so. days and we, like he's still four weeks to Cheltenham so we know he'll be, a lot yeah, he'll, he'll be coming he'll be, like the race on Sunday is going to bring him on some amount Right when you said earlier on um, winning two Grand Nationals would have to take something out of him and we'll only find out when he gets back to the track you'll only find out when you get back to Aintree or will you find out that because it hasn't so far it hasn't seemed to take a lick out of him Yeah you, you could find out on, on Sunday or you, you could find out in Cheltenham you know if, he, if he's not sparking and like if he's not sparking on Sunday or in Cheltenham, it's probably doubtful that he'd go for a Grand National. You know that type of way, but like he's not showing any signs of him not sparking. There should be no problem there. Stay, staying chasing is, is an awful, uh, like it's rigorous. It's very tough on horses. Like you, you see, when Demon won the Gold Cup, he's never the same again. And you see, staying chasers, it's hard for them to maintain their form. Like uh, as much as he makes it look easy, the Grand National, I mean, it must take an awful lot out of a horse to do that the way he does it. It has to, yeah. And, um, even even at the cross country race, like I know he won for twenty two lengths last mm. year, but like it's still, still four miles, hard, plus yeah, three miles six. It's yeah. still tough going, and, and then, he's very willing, like you yeah. know, so. And he's only a small horse as well. Like. Our guest this week is uh, Keith Donahue. You're listening to Friday Night Racing. Um, maybe you're watching us on YouTube or on offtheball.com. Friday Night Racing brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. You can follow the Twitter account at hri racing and the hashtag if you want to uh, upload some photographs or check whatever anybody else is doing. Every racing moment is the hashtag for that. Um, last year then at Cheltenham was a, a different scenario because there was a lot of pressure. It was short price, Grand National winner. Was that a different experience? Kind of, Were you more mature? Did you take in more of the occasion? Yeah, I'd say I enjoyed it a lot better last year. Did you, yeah? Yeah, a lot better because my weight was better as well. I woke up, I only had to lose, I think, a pound, a pound right. and a half to ride them. Happy it was days. a lot more enjoyable. Uh, That's a transformative... I was actually on a good run of it. He was after winning the buying hurdle we knew he was absolutely flying. Uh, I'd say I was probably never as confident going out in a race like right. that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is mad considering the obstacles in your in your yeah. way in a race like that. Like I knew, literally like it's easy I know it's easy yeah. to say it now, but like he was literally a certainty, like you know that type of way. How did the run of the race Keith, go? Keith's a good judge as well, he's, he doesn't say that very often. Right. How did the run of the race go? What was different? That same again, just perfect run around. But he's probably just that little bit better than some of the horses in that cross country that he can just travel easier and he jumps them fences so quick you have to be quick quick through them the hedges you can't waste any time in the air and that's what he's very good at you're a marked man marked combination obviously when you are the defending champion and people are like okay just follow him around now and if you're able to travel with him and when he goes you go like that's what everybody else is thinking in the race you're obviously not thinking that because you're the cream cream of that race so yeah. does, that, does that change your tactics at all in any way? No, I mean, like I jumped off last year and I wanted to kind of ride him to third or fourth, but over the first couple I was probably sixth or seventh. And he jumped to second and third a little bit careful and I, I was a small bit worried. And I remember jumping the canal turn and Mark Enroy jumped up my inside and I pulled him out to the left and I was kind of like, you need to wake up a bit here now. And I remember giving him a slap after, I think it was after, after jumping four, and that's not like him. I was a little bit worried early on. And this time I just winged one hedge and he just came alive. And after that, I knew then it was... What does winged one hedge mean? Just jumped really quick, like, right. jumped really well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he just he just came alive under me then. Right, so that's your horsemanship in the middle of it to realise I need to change something here. Yeah. There's a slight risk as well. You can be pissing off a horse you're doing that early in a race, you know, because he doesn't... There's a long way to go. But obviously, he just he was probably just a little bit, kind of, maybe a bit confident within himself. Just yeah, he... Yeah, he I think, going through yeah. the motions, maybe. Going through the motions a bit, yeah. yeah. What's the buzz like around having a two-time Grand National winner... Hopefully, all fingers, all things, fingers crossed, all things being equal, going back to, I, like I know the Elliot Yard has so much success year after year after year now for the last number of years. It's just been this juggernaut through Irish racing, and so the big days come and they keep coming. But this is, like, absolutely a global sports story. We're going to have a horse bidding for a three in a row that has never been done in the 150 years or whatever it is that the Grand National is running. That's yeah, like, special. Like the publicity he's getting for even just running this weekend. So like you imagine if he runs this weekend, runs well and wins in Cheltenham, like the publicity he's going to get going into Aintree then will just be phenomenal, I'd say. Like in the ad, we probably take it for granted because you're just seeing him every day. Yeah. He's, you, every lot you go out on, you're walking by him because that's where his stable is. Whereas like 
we nearly take it for you I don't mean to take it for granted but uh, and I suppose actually you can't you can't get too excited because it's actually quite far away but like you know if you were to spool forward and again all things being well but that week is going to be class that week at the Grand National is going to be amazing yeah probably not for me I won't be riding them <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's at the same time. It's great. I think it's great for racing, like to to have that. Um, you know, racing gets knocked a lot in the British press for this or that, and it's maybe it's going to struggle a bit. To, you can't always guarantee race cars will be in the paper. They're not in every. But I think everyone is latching on to Tiger Roll. Yes, yeah, so I'd say even if you're not into racing mm. or you've never seen a race, everybody knows the name yeah. Tiger Roll. Definitely know the name Tiger Roll. Like and. Um, He's been. He's probably is great for the sport. Like it's funny. Like he's not the most talented horse in the yard by, you know, by a long, by a long way. Long way I'd say you know. Don't mean like that. that a, that's that not way. disrespectful. It's just that's he's he's particularly suited to to the Grand National, and he's he's an amazing horse. But that's the funny thing about him being around Elliot. He's he's not like uh, he's not the Ibrahimovic or the Ronaldo, I suppose. I say that because it was actually a photo of the two of them in the paper. <laughs> it's come it's come into my head, but you know what I mean. He's more like the left back or whatever, but he's he's very well. Yeah, liked. Andy Robertson. But the right. only thing about Tiger Roll though is he th he thinks he's better than everybody. Yeah. Else. He's a very confident. If if he he probably does like a bit of Ronaldo about him. Like yeah. there's a bit of class. There's a bit of swagger. Bit of swagger about him. Like yeah. The yard the yard is kind of. Um, like the yard must be mad, the lads that are there, the the amount of talent you have riding out and even former jockeys like in Shane McCann and all them lads, it must be a great team. Yeah, there's there's, there's brilliant staff like there's a lot of lads like Simon McGonagall, Cosy McGivern, Shane McCann, Joey Elliott. They've all been there from the start, like mm. and um, you know, other people come and go, but the the main lads have always been there. I genuinely think with Gordon, as much as his his achievements are down to him, I think his team is massive. It's kinda of like saying he's a great manager. Alex Ferguson was a great manager, but he did have the players, and yeah. I think his team is massively important. Um, might have more of a like, and his his ability to be able to delegate responsibility because he can trust them implicitly. Yeah, like if Gordon's there or not, like we all know what we're doing in there. It's mm. all routine, and like whether he's there or not, it's nothing's done any different. Yeah, he probably just slows us down a little bit, mm. you know. That yeah. way. But like, there's nothing done any different if he's there or not there. Yeah, and that's the trust he has with you know the lads that he's. Close what I like most about it is the fact that they don't, none of them, none of you get ahead of yourselves. Like if Jack Kennedy were going on real well or Lisa O'Neill had won her at Cheltenham, you go into the yard, they're the same as the person mucking out. There's absolutely no errors or grace about them and they all, they're just part of the team. They go in, they work and that's it. Yeah. But that's it. Every, like realistically, everybody's the same. Mm. You know, you have to you have to respect everybody the same. So there's no point getting ahead of yourself, mm. especially not in racing. Obviously, yeah. Davy Russell rides them in the um, Grand National. Is it hard not to be riding them in the Grand National and kind of obviously you want to be? Well, do the weight, uh, anyway. you see, the first the first year that he went for the Grand National, he only had ten thirteen, and I'd done eleven four on him in the cross country race, and I had six pounds to lose that morning to ride him. Right. So if that was at the Grand National, I would have had what, six uh, eleven pound to lose, and it's just not physically possible. I wouldn't have done ten thirteen. Like obviously, I would have loved to be riding him, and you know that is the, obviously you know people say, oh, did it body? Uh, so you wouldn't be human if it didn't bother you, you know the type of it's a grand national like but um you know, last year I, I took it well enough, I was happy enough to I knew Cheltenham was gonna be my day. Yeah. And I got a bonus by winning the Bind Hurdle on him and I knew that the national was always gonna be Davies day on him. Yeah. Is there no way you could do a, a lesser weight? Like have you talked to all the nutritionists in the world and the dietitians and gone Oh don't don't you worry, what do you want me to do? Cut my leg off or something? Well no, like I mean He's six foot. Yeah, that's the, the issue. problem, yeah. 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 Because in fairness, you you have gone through the middle, like you've oh, yeah. you're not you, you've tried probably quite a few things. When when I was twenty, I broke my femur and I went up to thirteen stone when I was twenty. Mm. It's just like it's it, there's other people that's six foot and they're ten stone, ten and a half stone, and they're fine. But yeah. Everybody's body's different, and I'd be a stocky enough built, and I'd I'd say I've you know I've probably heavy bones as well. Like and right, you I should probably be fourteen or fifteen stone. Like. I probably should, yeah. yeah. And like if I look at food, I put on. On weight, you know yeah. that type of way. Tell me about it. I know, I know. <laughs> I feel your pain. Well, you're trying to do something with that swimming thing, aren't you? Yeah, there you go. Thirty days yet, but uh, the race has never run. I'm just like if you were to go vegetarian or something. Is that have you tried all that kind of stuff? No, I, I do like food as well. <laughs> <laughs> you have to live a bit as well. Yeah, There's absolutely. a lot more to life as well. Absolutely. It's true. It's true. So, um, what else is going on in the yard at the moment apart from Tiger Roll? Um, this is where the real track gets interesting now. There's real stars in the in the yard. Supposed to start, start to 
you know, a few horses that didn't run at the Dublin Race Festival and that, like, you know, the good horses for Cheltenham, so a few of them kind of done a bit of work this morning, so we just started to get them in tip-top form for Cheltenham now, like, everything's, yeah. everything's just leaning towards Cheltenham now. Abba Yeah, he's all, all good. good. All yeah. good, yeah. And he was the most obvious. I suppose him and Envoy Allen were the two obvious ones that missed. Yeah, well, like Abercadabras was after having four runs. Yeah. He didn't need to have another yeah. run. And like Envoy Allen, the same sort What more could he do? He didn't need to prove anything. And then, no matter what, even if he got. I don't think he will get beaten in Cheltenham. But if he did, he's still only going to be a horse over a fence. Like, so there's no point in, in rushing him. You, you were making interesting comments about his trip that um, there was, you wouldn't be at all worried about in terms of his natural pace for sort of two miles and that. Oh yeah, he uh, Envoy Allen could he he could win the he could win the Supreme or the Albert Bartlett. Mm, he's just the same day. The same, well, <laughs> probably. I <laughs> know, no. but like he, yeah. he he's just you know he 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 just has it all. Yeah, I, it's exciting. Like and to think that they've obviously Bally Adam coming on Sunday and then Malone Road injured as well. If some talents at Chile Park. He must have heard a bit about Bally Adam. Uh, no comment. <laughs> yeah. But he's obviously seven to one with the Shelton bumper or whatever. So what's he like as well? He was a big expensive store purchase. Or expensive X point or Pointer, yeah. No, he he seems he, see, he seems to work well, but obviously Come on, Keith, no. He seems to work well. Seven to one for the champion bumper, he hasn't even run yet. Well, I wrote him in a bit of work a few weeks ago and uh, and he a horse beat him by three or four lengths and then he went down and got beaten. LN, no, he, got, <laughs> he went down and got beaten a bumper, so I don't know. But yeah. I don't know, he, he wasn't fit back then. <laughs> yeah. Is he he's uh he, I think probably three hundred and thirty grand or something like that. He was, yeah. No, he, he they put the money down, but they're yeah. buying unreal talent. Talent, so. yeah. Like he, he uh, Bally Adam does look exciting, but he, like, if he go, he's gonna have to win impressively on Sunday yeah. to be going to win a he's champion. Very bumper. Short, like, he is very short. He is very short. He looks forward. very very yeah, good. Yeah, like. he is. He is. Yeah. But he does work well. Anything yeah. else you want to pump for information Asher, there? It has while, to be. It has to be Sam Crow. I mean, he looked, um, he looked, he looked like the bee's knees when KM Dunne who rode him in uh, Down Royal, because um, I was working this out today. In terms of when you go to Cheltenham and you say if you have a good anti-post bet, and Sam Crow was a good anti-post winner for me. It was like the last proper good Cheltenham winner I've had it was a really good win, but I'd, I'd backed Sam Crow all year. But I was then thinking like. You went there with so much confidence that Sam Crow was going to win the race, but Sam Crow has won one race since then, if, if, if I'm right. He's won one race, and that was his beginner's chase when I thought, I think we were here that day, it was a Friday, yeah, it was a Friday down right. I remember we were actually, he, it was, it was, we were recording at the time, and I don't know, where, where could you start with him? I don't know, like, there's plenty of different ways that you can look at Sam Crow. Like, you can look at, was his form good enough? Yeah. Was the horse that he beat in the... Was, uh, Supreme. The, su no, it wasn't the Supreme. The, 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 the Neptune, rather. Neptune, yeah. um, Roger Buckhouse was hot, wasn't yeah, it? Summerhill Boy. Summerhill Boy. Like, then when you look at he only beat Paloma Blue mm. in Leopard's Den. Mm. He's running the handicap chases now. He, like, there's different faults. Like, you wonder, was he hyped up way too much? Probably. Could have been. Mm. You can notice, you can state this case. You're giving him grief there. There was shade. He, he didn't even appreciate. Was he hyped up too much by people like in the media who'd backed him from? But then he uh, is winning though. He's, like but was, the, the reputation was doing, and the what he was doing at home. Yeah, what he's doing like his. I still think uh, I I'd give him the win of the doubt at Limerick because I think um, Sam Crow did an awful lot right in that race. The ground was atrocious. Like at the end of the race, he, he could barely jump to last. Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't think he was just, it was the same Sam Crow going into Limerick as it was say going into Den Royal right. or going into. Uh, Going into the Drinmore. I know like, he fell into the Drinmore, but I don't think it was the same Sam Crow. Do you, like, mentally, has he changed at home? And that you can imagine as a horse, your confidence does go a bit when you've had, like, he's had a succession of one win in what, nearly two years now. Yeah, I'd say his, his work probably in the last year and a half hasn't been as good as it was mm. when he was a novice hurdler. Mm. Whether there's better whatever horses, that to, whatever that's yeah. down to, I don't know. What's but, he like now? Uh, he actually done a bit of work this morning, and uh, Shane McCann, who rides him every day, said he's very happy with him. Like mm. so, and I don't know if he's going to go to Cheltenham or not. But I don't, <laughs> whatever like, race he wants in the Cheltenham, I'm still going to back him. Like so. Yeah, yeah, like like if Sam Crow came back and won in Cheltenham, I wouldn't be one bit surprised. Yeah, not one bit surprised. Mm. You know, but there is that Nagging case knows. where you can say was he overhyped? Mm. You know, how does Envoy? I, I, I think horses get hyped up so much now. Mm. Over nothing, I think you know social media is everything. Just hyped them up to be the next best thing. Like there is that definitely. Is and Envoy that, Allen yeah. is in that category already. Envoy Allen is in that category. He's worth it, obviously. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> just in that case, it's, it's legitimate. Last question about um, Tiger Roll then for now. Uh, was there disappointment in the yard when the weights were announced or did you kind of expect that it was going to be what it was in the end? Um, I'd say he, he was always going to have top weight, wasn't he? I know like he has more weight than a Gold Cup winner and Tiger Roll, obviously, I don't think he'd win a Gold Cup, but has made a bit of the same form in the last two years as when he won the Gold Cup, I don't think he has, like, and they haven't seen Tiger Roll since he won the Nationals, so I think it's kind of fair enough. It's asking an awful lot, though, 11 pounds on last year. I, I think it's, whether it's right or wrong, I, I do think people don't realise how tough it's going to be to carry top weight. Right. Like, it's not, like, Boros Sane, for example, who's seven years of age, Irish national winner, trained for the race, he's have to give him, he was going to have to give him a stone. We, um, we were chatting with Tom Malone during the week and I was asking the question, and you can probably answer this, or give us your view on it, was there, uh, is there, like, a slight... Uh, Brexit element to this whole thing I, uh, post the, the I, I relationship between. I don't think so, really. To be honest, I, like I think I I I really did not like uh, Phil Smith, the former handicapper. I just did, I hated his way of going about things. His, you know, the kind of arrogance that he would come out with to to, to explain a mark when like as much as. The Irish handicapper will make a mark that just it, you can't really make sense of it. But like he he will give horses marks that, like he, he would give horses marks that look way too high, and then suspiciously horses would be kept out of races by marks that were too low. And for me, he was handicapping connections. Now, he, Phil Smith would argue was his team, but I spoke to the the head of um, Dominic Gardner Hill. I spoke to him last Friday just to give a background to it and. Um, Martin Greenwood, I think, is a handicapper who looked after the Grand National. Like, there, there was no messing. It was kind of like the referee who you don't really see in the match that's done a good job. They explained it. Like, Tiger Roll, he bolted up in the race last year, let's be honest. So he gave him 11 pounds. He, you don't really compress horses that are entry Grand National horses. You compress horses like Native River or a horse like that. I think he should have. I think he should have compressed Del to Work a bit more because Del to Work should be encouraged to come into the race. Um, he's not going to run the race, but I think he should be more. Like Tiger Roll isn't really a horse for compression. It's not the handicapper's job to to make it as possible as as it can be for Tiger Roll to create history. That's not his job. And. Um, you know, like the two Irish trainers, it's not I his job, but it's also a little bit. I mean, you can't be, you can't just work in a vacuum. This is this is show business, baby. This is entertainment. It is. They compress them, but like, but then, it, like, is it fair on everybody else if you're just letting Tiger roll in just for the history, for the crowd? Well, for I, mean, the, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. So, like, it's so not fair. on... isn't there? Aren't there degrees of fairness? Like one pound, not great. Four pounds, probably too fair. Two pounds. Yeah, I know. It wouldn't have been, but it's, I, I don't really see that's going to make an awful lot of difference in that he's going to have top weight. What do you think? What do you think? The, I, to be honest, people are asking me about the Grand National weights. I didn't look at them a whole lot because once I seen he'd top weight and Gordon's and Delta Works not going to run in and his next one was 10 stone 13, I knew I, I knew I wouldn't be riding in the race, so yeah. I didn't even pay much attention to it at all. I'm not going to lie. But like, in fact, like, you have to call Eddie O'Leary out in this, like in that he he did say, you know, we have a mark in our head and if he doesn't, if he doesn't give that and like one pound to me, everything Eddie said, even yesterday he said he was a very doubtful runner and today he's running. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, there's an element of mischief about it, but... Well, come on, I, I, you call him out, you praise him, surely, for adding a little bit of theatre to the announcement of the weights. Maybe, no? it's, maybe it's theatre, but Eddie, Eddie wouldn't suggest that he's in the business of theatre. Maybe that's more for but his they brother. are. They are in the business. I, like... I find it entertaining, but I don't, I don't think they can really argue now and they've kind of backtracked quickly in that he is running the race seemingly. My worry would be he's going to have 11 stone 10 and we don't know how what sort of shape shape he's in because he hasn't run in ages and I, I, I would slightly fear for how he'll run on that ground because we've had an awful lot of rain I'll that ground is not going to suit on Sunday no on definitely, Sunday. Sorry, definitely okay. not so that'll be my concern but the, the race itself I don't think people realise to me he's, he's an awful price at 5 or 6 to 1 I think he's a lot to do to win that race at top weight which one? Tiger, sorry, on the national. national, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, um, no one, no one should be betting on the Grand National just yet, unless you've got like a. He's well in in the cross country off one seven one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even with, uh, you know, like the. It's my my concern is how he'll run on Sunday. Are to you be being sarcastic? I can't tell. Yeah. No, it's a conditioned race. Yeah, right. okay. he's level weight. He, oh, okay. Yeah. All I, right. So I what price he for that? I don't know, actually, yeah, Johnny. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I've honestly haven't looked at that race all year, but uh, people should look at. The, the, there's all, all the chats about Tiger Roll, but there'll be 39 other horses in the race, and yeah, all trying to beat him. I, ironically enough, some of them might be out of the handicap because he isn't as low as maybe he could be. So it's not all negative for his weight. Okay, all right. Let's turn our attention to the weekend's racing then, um, and uh, here is the read. It says, "This is being nice. It's regression to the mean 
for the Tote Irish Injured Jockeys Charity Fund as it remains at €440 Euros after the Willie Mullins trained Ciel de Neige. Ciel de Neige could only manage second last weekend in Newbury's Betfair Hurdle. Oh, jeez, like that, that's unbelievable. Like that saying Sinn Féin had a terrible election because like they're not in power. I mean, Ciel de Neige was 12 to 1 on Friday when I tipped him. He was beaten ahead or something like that. Not back in each way. Eh. Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Not and he'd be all or, all or, all or nothing. <laughs> like, obviously, we did, obviously we didn't, yeah. But there were five places. If you backed him in the race, you got a great run for your money. It was uh, God, it was a sickener. He was beaten by a 33 to 1 shot. All right. Anyway. Now, super racing this weekend as Goran Park hosts the Red Mills race day tomorrow, while Sunday obviously sees the return of Tiger Roll in the Boyne Hurdle at Navin. Cross Channel, the highest rated jumper in the UK surname, will start a warm order favourite for the Ascot Chase tomorrow afternoon. New Tote customers can get up to 50 euro cash back for opening a new account to see the tote.com website for more details. Loads of good racing to go through. Let's start with um, Saturday in Goran. The Red Mills trial hurdle goes to post. I don't have time for that one, sorry. Yeah, uh, we don't have time for that. So, uh, so well, sorry, 1.44 starts. The Red Mill, yeah, these yeah. are the new kind of race times. They do, do actually look more like dog racing times, but they, they're trying to fit in races properly and not have delays and all that. I think it's actually a good idea, but Durasso and Silius Emery, I mean, Cracking race. I just have to say, I have real sympathy for Goran because the, the, the Tiestes day, you could, couldn't see anything. It was clouded and fog. And tomorrow, the forecast not great. Not good. Not good at all. I think the race meet might go ahead. I don't know if you've heard, Keith, but the, the conditions won't be spectator friendly for what is, in, our, in some ways, is nearly their biggest day of the year in ways because they have two proper good, like, uh, hurdle yeah. entry. The chase yeah. is a cracker. And, like, it's desperate bad luck considering. Generally, over the last sort of even two years, we haven't had really bad weather that often. Ireland Gorn have they've been unlucky, but hopefully it goes ahead. Durasso has to give City of seven pounds, but I wouldn't be surprised. I still, I'm a massive fan of that horse. Okay, um, then at two fifty four in Goran Park as well. It's the Red Mills Chase. Seven runners in this: Real Steel eleven to eight, Chris's Dream three to one, Shattered Love six to one, Snow Falcon seven, Kaiser Black eight, Death Judy ten to one, and Tout est permis. Yeah, I hadn't seen the betting for this. I think that's crazy pricing. I'd probably it's Chris's dream favourite. He's actually eleven to four against Real, Real Steel beat Footpad last year. Footpad's now gone off to America. Um I don't think Footpad ran his race. I mean he was very tired jumping the last and Real Steel beat him, but I would no way would I have him uh, that price well I think Chris's dream should be favourite or at least very, very close. It's a great bet at eleven to four if you can get anything like that. All right. I'd uh, take a bit of ten to one on death duty there, I would. Actually that's interesting though, because he, he was um Jeez, going back to the Albert Bartlett of 2017, hot 2016, hot favourite in the race. 2017, rather, then went chasing, beaten on his comeback. But yeah, it, it, he ran in um, the Galmoy. Yeah, and like he, had, you know, he, he's after. He missed two years, did he? Year mm. and a half. Yeah. Obviously, that day, Stephen to stay in Leopardstown. He ran in Leopardstown. Sorry, he ran in Leopardstown over two mile, and he was just on top of his head again. Footpad was it? Yeah, and he made it. He fell at the last, and he, you know, he got injured. And uh, you forget these races quickly as well. Like you that's, do, yeah. Th that was a big race at the time. Like if he, if he came back to his form at all, a bit of heavy ground is what he needs. Mm. Two and a half mile, and he's getting weight. And he's getting weight. He, mm. he, he could be dodgy. One. He, he done. A, he done a good bit of work during the week. It was the first time I've seen a bit of spark back in him. Listen to the man. All right. So death duty around about ten to one. If that hopefully race goes ahead at Corn, will we talk about Ascot and uh, yeah, what's going you, on there? You mentioned surname um, hasn't been seen since running the King George. When uh, I mean, I thought he's Ascot run. I thought he was flattered because Altior ran very flat that day, but he didn't do much wrong in Kempton. I, I don't think he's an out now three miler. Um, taking on Riders in the Storm, who's must be the best Scorpion nearly in training now. With might by kind of disappointing, um, but he's really tried for Nigel Twist and Davies. He's Every time I hear him, I just want to put on the doors. Genuinely, that song, I can't get out of my head for the day. Give us but the I last. think, well, go on. Do, 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 do. Riders on the storm. And so on. So on. <laughs> anyway, he probably won't beat Surname, will he? I'd say he'd struggle, will he? Yeah. And if, sir, if, if, if the proper Surname turns up. Yeah. yeah. And no, no reason to think he won't. Okay, surname uh, five to two on at the moment. Riders in the storm about three to one. There's another race at Ascot. It goes to post at one fifty. The uh, Sedexo Reynolds Town Novices Chase. Pim nine to four. Sam Brown five to two. Copperhead three to one. Danny Wizbang thirteen to two. Two for gold thirty to two. And Alsa Mix twenty five to one. Yeah, incredible run for uh, two for gold. Um, Pim has absolutely thrived as well. Strawway horse uh, won very easily last time. He stays very well. Probably be my margin favourite. Uh, classy enough for Newell of the race. I'm not sure if any of these be good enough to win RSA Chase. But on that note, actually, battle over the iron. 
What happened is... That's another... Mystery. I, think, I wouldn't call it a mystery either. Another one of these overhyped. Hyped, overhyped horses. You look at his form. Mm. He won a bumper. I know he won it well. He won a maiden hurdle well. He won a grade one in Nace over hurdles. Don't know how strong the form was. Yeah. Went to Cheltenham and disappointed. Came back this year. Fell in in the beginning of chasing Galway. Fell in. in that day, yeah. yeah. Fell in in Punches Town. Yeah. Looked like he might be idling. Yeah. Got nearly a walk over in a leopard's leopard yeah. and got into a proper race and got beat. This, I, I do like listening to this. It's like I actually, love this thing of hyping uh, horses, drives yeah. me mad. He's a very, very good horse. He's some jumper, he, he's, actually. Oh, you wouldn't get a better jumper than yeah. him. He's but, just... like, he's been talked up as if he's the next but best it, he, thing. Like. Yeah, I can see why. If you you list off, like, wins a bumper, yeah, he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't bold enough. Like, he wasn't, in fairness, there was a bit of a, he was hyped, yeah. there's no doubt. Right. And, and, and but you've just said he's a great jumper, so it's easy. He, he so is, all the all the accoutrements of a hype are right there. It's like, a he's few slow wins. though, probably as well. well that as in, at that, like, he's at the level of trying to beat the likes of Faheen, maybe he's who is obviously a champion hurdle winner. Maybe right. he yeah, just doesn't have the gears. Means, yeah, but if he's slow, he keep going, mm. he was fading out of that race. You know, that type yeah, of way. maybe like, he didn't go quick enough. I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I thought he was better than that. Anyway, yeah. Navin, let's talk, Navin. The uh, the Boyne hurdle, uh, Labrox Ireland Boyne hurdle goes to post at uh, ten to two on Sunday. Again, hopefully everything goes to plan. Durasso five to two. Tiger Roll eleven to four at the moment. Penhill five to one. Kilfenora five to one. Bacassan six to one. Magical Light thirteen to two. Kilta Vic sixteen to one. There's a couple of others as well. So I I I'd, I'll obviously leave this to Keith, but I I wouldn't imagine the Rasso will run un, unless Gorn is called off. But this was obviously an obvious choice because Gorn might be called off, and I think the Rasso or um, Kilfenora. I think one of them will win, essentially. Yeah, obviously Kilfenora is coming out of handicaps, isn't he, into mm. a graded race? But he's after being winning two, two three, form, last three rocks. years. Yeah, last he won. Three, like, yeah. He beat Alpha Mix and 18 links back to third. third one. Yeah, the Navin last day, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, there is a lot of depth in, in that buying hurdle, like with Kilfenora. Obviously, Durasso will probably run tomorrow if Gorman is on. Then you have Penn Hill. He was probably second to Benny the Dude last day, but there was no second. No, I don't, I don't think he's the horse he was yeah. for some reason anyway. Um, I think Kilfenora is the is the is the probably the one like yeah if if Tyrone needs to run. How do you want the the race to go? What do you when you're looking at this field, what are you thinking about in terms of how they like to run and how much analysis and assessment do? Yeah, I'd never be one to read into into form or tactics of horses too much. Um a lot of people do read into it and get into the whole lot of it, but I'd be kind of more of a man to just get up and let it be. I think I could probably, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, I probably learned that from Paul Carberry. You know, like, where, <laughs> <laughs> like every, where everything is different. Like, I wouldn't read into it a whole lot. Like, I know what I'm going to do, you know, probably give him a bit of a chance and just have him, ride them to come home and whether that's good enough to win or not. Yeah. You did model yourself know. in Paul Carberry in many ways. Or oh, since I was a child, I've modeled yeah. myself in Paul Carberry. I don't think uh, people appreciate the loss that he is to the game. Like it's just the the most one of the middle days race, and he'll just light it up doing something yeah. genius. Like I don't think I've ever, I don't think I'll ever see anyone like him actually. No, there's, there's no like you'll never ever get a horseman like him again. What I've seen what I've seen him doing on horses at home and things like that. Like it's it's just phenomenal. What like, kind of stuff? Uh, it's just like it's hard to even explain. Like like the man just makes everything look so easy. You know, everything's just so natural to him. Like it's. It's unreal. I know there was obviously debate about the best jockey ever, but most naturally talented jockey. I'd never seen anything like it. Yeah. yeah. Like Paul didn't want to ride thousands of winners like Tony McCoy. He didn't probably have the horses that Ruby Walsh had to ride. So you know that type of way. And like he if he if he wanted to do all that, he'd have been better than all of them. Mm. Yeah. I remember when he rode a horse called Loyal Focus in the Maiden Herd for Dermot Weld and um he missed the last and looked like he was kind of almost pulling the horse up and then he nudged him and nudged him and got him up to win on the on the on literally on the bridle by a short head and a photo finish in the line. Can you imagine at two miles an hour at speed you're going, he got up and everyone was like, Paul, what were you doing? He said, oh, Dermot said to get there late. <laughs> like he literally, you, I, I can't find that video anymore because it's gone off the yeah. archive. But it's, to me, it's one of the most astonishing rides. Of it. He literally nudged him up to get up by about that on the bridle. If you get that wrong, like you're, you're banned for whatever, like... Um, but Carberry's just like, gosh, it was an early on a Saturday, have a bit of crack. Genius, <laughs> absolute genius. Last race we talked about, four o'clock at Navin on uh, Sunday, the 10-up novice chase. 
Do, is this, have you picked a tip yet? Uh, no, actually. I, I actually um, haven't, but Paul, uh, sorry, um, Keith's Elwood and Milan native. Yeah, Paul would probably have to improve a little bit. Elwood won a beginner's chase in, in Turles the last day. Milan native is yet to win over fences. Um, it's, an open, it's an open race without yeah. kind of one of the seven or six that's standing out. I thought that was a fair bit weaker than the hurdle race on the day. Speakeasy is interesting as well. Um, yeah. The fall of the last day. Captain, Captain, Captain CJ, CJ could absolutely. be the one there. Train near, not that far from you. Give us your tip. Um, bumper and going. Huh? Go to the bumper and going. Okay. That's actually... I, I do have a tip, but... Well, if we have some... Are we going, Johnny? No, no. No, no, no. Absolutely no, 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 not. No, the no. fact that he's not going with the bumper in Navin when they've... Sure, you are after talking this thing up to win the champion <laughs> bumper, so it's going to be no price on Sunday. One of the best horses of all time. <laughs> no, I'm going to go with his odds. That's Bally Adam, but let, let's go back to Gorn, because um, Keith is a good judge. The Ronan Lawler, this race actually should just be mentioned. Ronan Lawler uh, was a young lad riding at um, Pat Fahey's yard who basically died in a tragic work incident. So I think we should definitely remember him. I was, it was horrible tough for the yard. He was riding a horse that bolted or something and just lost his life at a desperately young age. So it's lovely to see that he's remembered. Um, that's the 4.39. Actually, interesting, yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued, Keith. What are you picking first? Do, do you even know? I don't, I don't think you even have a run. Oh, you do, sorry. Queensbrook. Yeah. You don't need to know anymore. Is that the tip? Yes. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, <laughs> that's interesting now because that race isn't too bad. Kylie's horse in it. Um, Elizabeth Jay has nice form, and Willie's a horse will definitely be favourite in the morning. So, don't need to say any more. Right. Queensbrook, in the bumper, yeah. in Gore on Saturday. Yeah. Scirocco. Keith, it's been great having you in. Best of luck this weekend, and best of luck over the next. Um, it's going to be a pretty exciting couple of months. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, a month till. Cheltenham for me, so if we can just get a nice run into Tiger Roll Sunday and get you know getting back to Cheltenham, that'll be be brilliant. How long do you have riding left? Do you think in terms of doing the weight and that? I don't know, I don't know. Um, I'd like to keep going for another good few years anyway, mm -hmm. but obviously to see what my body lets me lets me do. Like it's obviously as I get o older, it is probably going to get harder. Um, but we'll keep going and see. Best oh, that's all we can do. Yeah. yeah. Another Friday night racing in the books for you here on Off the Ball, brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. We'll see you next week. Friday night racing on Off the Ball. And they're off. Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.